Hello guys, my name is Saurabh Kulkarni. Welcome to this online video training session of Hypermesh. In this tutorial, we will see how to solve the traces problem in Hypermesh. This is my problem statement. This is a structure which is fixed at one end and free at other end. Uh, the material is steel then the properties of steel are mentioned then the cross section is solid rectangle having the dimension as 100 by 100 <coughs> then we will see the procedure first we have to create the material then the next step is to create the cross section which is solid rectangle having 100 by 100 dimensions then create the property then another create the component then create the geometry then create the loads then assign the loads and boundary conditions then create the load step and solve the model so we will see step by step so open the hyper mesh make sure that the optist user profile is selected then the first step is to create the material so to create the material go to the material collector icon make uh, enter the material name as steel select a type as isotropic select the card image as manual then click on create edit select the values of e new and row then click on return then again click on return in the model browser you will find the material uh, of steel is created now the next step is to create the cross section so to create the cross section go to the 1d page hyperbeam panel then select the standard section radio button is active then select the standard section library as hyperbeam then standard section type as solid rectangle then click on create once you click on create the hyperbeam panel will open then specify the dimensions of 100 by 100 then to view the uh, to fit to uh, to fit to screen click f from the keyboard now on the right side of the window you will find some of the properties of this cross section like area centroid moment of inertia radius of chiration polar moment of inertia whenever you create the cross section and assigning the dimensions the software automatically calculates all the all these properties so then click on model view to get back into the hypermesh window and click on return in the model browser you will find that we have created the cross section the next step is to create the property so to create the property go to the property collector icon right side of the model collector icon then enter the property name as 1D so, and define a specific color then select the type as 1D then select the card image as P beam then select the material as steel then beam section as solid section rectangle section then click on create edit select the continuation line 2 then select these values C1A, C2A, D1A, D2A, E1A, E2A, F1A, F2A. Enter the, these values. I will mention this value. This is the C, D, E, F points. So we have to enter these values. That is uh, for C, 50, 0, D, 0, 50, like this. then c 50 0 then 0 50 then minus 50 then 0 0 minus 50 then click on return then click on return in this way we have created a property the next step is to create the component so to create the component go to the component character icon enter the component name as truss define a specific color then select the property which we have created that is 1d click on create and click on return in this way we have created the component the next step is to create the geometry so to create the geometry go to the geometry page nodes panel 
then we will create this same geometry using the nodes so first we will create the point A which is at 0 0 position then we will create the point C which is at 4000 0 position like this so 0 0 first point then second point third point and fourth point then fifth point in the window we cannot find the nodes which we have created so to view this nodes click on F from the keyboard so in this way you can see the nodes which we have created now we have to join this node with the help of element so to join these nodes with the help of elements go to the 1D page bars panel select the property as 1D select the element type element uh, first of all make sure that bar 2 radio button is active then select the property then select the element type as C beam then select the orientation as Y then select these nodes In this way we have created the geometry. Now the next step is to delete this temporary nodes. So to delete this temporary nodes go to the geometry page, temporary nodes, click on clear all, then click on return. Now the next step is to create the loads. So to create the loads go to the load, co load collector icon, enter the load collector name constraint, then Select the no card image and click on create. Go to the return, then go to the analysis page, go to the constraint panel, select these nodes and make sure that all the all these uh, boxes uh, are checked in front of our DOF 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then we will click on create. We cannot visualize, uh, visualize the constraint which we have created. It is too much small so we will increase its size this option only just increase the size then the next uh, the next at this node uncheck the box in front of dof1 and click on create so in this way we have fixed at this location and we we have allow this geometry to move in x direction DOF 1 2 3 4 5 6 stands for DOF 1 stands for translation in x then 2 uh, translation in y 3 translation in z and 4 5 6 are rotation in x y z direction now the next step is to create the force so to create the force go to the load collector icon enter the name as force assign a specific color then click on create now go to the analysis page force panel select this node then select the orientation as y axis and enter this force magnitude that is 50 kN we will increase the arrow size okay. now at this node the force is 30 kN click on create so in this way we have set up the problem now the next step is to create the load step so create uh, to create the load step go to the analysis page load step panel enter the name as linear static select a type as linear static check the box in front of SPC and load select the SPC as constraint load as force and click on create then click on return in this way we have created the model setup now the next step is to solve uh, solve this model before that save this model uh, 
I will save this model here. Then go to the analysis page, optic track panel. Select the export option to all, run option to analysis, memory option to default. Then click on optic track. So software will solve the problem. The software has shown some error that is C bar 5 has an invalid orientation vector. So we will see how to solve this problem. So click on close, click on return. This is the common problem. So go to the 1D page, bars panel, then select the update radio button, then click on elements, say display and select the orientation as Z axis. Select the property as 1D, element type as C beam and click on update. Check the boxes in front of all these parameters and click on update. Once you click on update, click on return, then go to the analysis page, optistruct, optistruct, yes. Now in the model, you will find that in the message log you will find that analysis has completed. Now to view these results, click on results. The software will open the another window that is hyperview. In the hypermesh, we set up the problem in hypermesh that is pre-processor and to, uh, for the post-processing hypermesh opens another new window that is hyperview it will take time Click on apply. Then select the orientation as XY. To view these results in hyperview, click on this control icon. Then select the result type as displacement and click on apply. So you can see that the displacement of 2.54 mm is generated. Then we can see the element stresses also. So this is in axis stresses and you, you can see the stresses in each component also by selecting the component. So this concludes the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for the more videos.